it's currently just started raining. If you can see. Rain is probably my favourite kind of weather, especially in autumn, and I haven't gone on my daily walk yet, so I'm just about to go out in the rain, and I thought I would vlog this walk. I thought I would do a whole video just on a walk. I'm going to show you the things that I sometimes do on walks. I'm going to show you the beautiful things that I see. This video is also sponsored by BBC Sounds. Um, I sometimes like to listen to things when I'm on walks, and so today for part of my walk, I'm going to listen to a programme on BBC Sounds. I've just downloaded this spooky episode, it's episode one of The Witch Farm and it's about a haunted supernatural property and the history behind it. I'm really looking forward to learning about it. I'm first of all just going to pack my bag, so I'm going to use my clunker. It's waterproof which is great, so I'm going to pack the book of the countryside because it's quite, it's, it's the kind of thing which is quite nice to read as you're walking around and I'm hoping I'll be able to see and learn something as I'm, as I'm going around. Um, I'm also going to bring my favourite poetry collection which is the Four Seasons Poems by Everyman Pocket Poets. Earphones are downstairs but I will pack my phone. For safety reasons I like to share my location if I go out on a walk by myself. Then I will bring a notebook and pen. One of the Zebra Sarasa vintage pens, these ones are very good. And I think that's everything. And I'm going to put on a journal Now, of course, I've got to put my coat on. The rain's actually stopped a little bit. E and even though this isn't waterproof, this is my favorite coat to wear in the rain. I'm also going to wear my yellow wellies, which always remind me of Coraline. Our neighbours have lots of apple trees and the compost bins are now full of apples. Um, they did use quite a lot of them and we made some into apple pies and things but so many of them just fell and went rotten before there, there was a chance to have them eaten. Lots of them always end up with worms inside them which is quite sad um, but at least the worms are getting them I suppose. Yeah there's a huge pile of apples in this compost bin and every time you walk past it smells like cider um, because the apples are fermenting, um, which I don't think it's a very nice smell, that vinegary smell, but it's also so distinctly autumnal and it reminds me, and it's very nostalgic, it smells like bonfire nights from when I was a kid. Uh, I mean, they're beautiful. I love the colour of these apples. It's funny that we think of insects eating fruit like this. We think of it as a kind of disgusting thing, but actually why is it disgusting? They're literally eating this fruit which otherwise wouldn't be eaten. Oh, and yes, I did change my Coraline welly boots to these like shorter ones. One random fact about me that you probably didn't know, I have a perpetual need to recite Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven wherever I go. It's like when you can't get a song out of your head. I can't get The Raven out of my head. I'm actually just constantly reciting it to myself. The rhythm and rhyme together, it's, you can't stop. And I think you really get a sense of how obsessed he is, how terrified he is. It's like when you start to get scared or anxious and your thoughts spiral and you can't stop them. That's what's happening to the narrator in The Raven. He can't stop and the rhythm and rhyme mean that the reader can't stop either. You've got to continue to the end of every stanza but then you have this nevermore and you've got this very elliptic um, uncertainty and that means that you've got to keep on going.
Now, I don't believe in ghosts. I don't believe in the supernatural. But I like reading about it and I like, well, and I'm hoping I'm gonna like listening about it. 30 years ago, a young couple moved into a house in rural Wales and it was reported to be haunted. Apparently there have been more exorcisms in this house than any other property in Britain. I'm just a few minutes in, I'll keep you updated on what I think. Ooh, apologize that it's quite that it's a little bit <laughs> blurry with all the rain it's and it's also very misty uh, which is quite atmospheric for this program also making me feel a little spooked out because they've just arrived there and they're describing the um, remains of the old manor house this show is about the history of the so-called most haunted house in Britain. The witch farm is based on the real story of Liz and Bill, who moved to this house and then creepy things started to happen, like noises only one of them could hear. In the programme, Danny Robbins is investigating what happened in 1989 and actually visits the house to see if it can convince him that ghosts are real. I wasn't convinced, but I'm gonna listen to the next one and it's very good storytelling, especially because it's part dramatized, which makes it very atmospheric on a day like this. There will be a link in the description box if you want to listen to this show through BBC Sounds. I would highly recommend it for this time of the year. I'm back from my walk now and I retrospectively realize that the rain I think broke my microphone on the camera, so the audio for the rest of the video is absolutely awful. And after that, I read from this autumn book, but as I say, the camera was broken by this point, unfortunately. I was reading here the start of the chapter on, quote, feathered travellers, so all about birds migrating, which was um, because I'd just seen a couple of birds. I'm going to reread it to you now. Every day the swallows and martins have been growing more and more excited. Such a twittering around the eaves, such a flying backwards and forwards of eager birds, has been going on for, for weeks past. It is easy to guess that something very important must be happening. Just really unfortunate that the camera broke especially because this walk was so lovely. And what I was trying to demonstrate is that on these walks, I try to be as reflective as possible. And I was kind of trying to take you along on my thought processes while I'm walking. So for example, like today I was looking down this valley and I was just thinking, how on earth is this real? How is it that I'm in this place at this time? It's raining, the colors are vibrant and I'm watching the leaves fall like snow. I mean just the fact that this moment exists at all. And I also used the autumn book to learn a little bit more about toadstools because I found some here, um, but I couldn't identify them because the book only had like a page and a half on toadstools. But it did say that um, toadstools and mushrooms grow paler in color, the larger that they get, and that they start to invert, like the shape of them will invert um, when they reach a certain size.
it really was properly torrential and pouring down but actually I haven't been on a walk in the rain for a really long time and so I'm really glad for that and it was a blessing. I actually went straight upstairs to edit this video because I was excited to see the footage so um, I haven't even had a mug of tea yet after getting back from my walk. I'm gonna have to go and get one now. Voice over me is now going to cut to filmed me and I'm gonna go and make some tea. I feel like this is slightly post-structuralist. I don't know what tea to go for. I want to have a candlelit library, but I might have an Earl Grey. Plus this Earl Grey isn't caffeinated. Because it's already seven o'clock and I have been feeling quite anxious recently. So I, I'm trying not to drink too much caffeine. Which mug should we go for? This one's my favorite. I always find it so strange when I watch a video and somebody's editing the video in the video. I'm including this <laughs> intentionally just because I always find it weird when I see it. Anyway, I'm going to get back to editing this video and I'll probably see you tomorrow because I want to read you a poem, which I didn't manage to read you today because my microphone broke. I've got two cameras, the one I'm filming on and then my vlogging camera. My vlogging camera I got when I went to university, so it's four years old and it's lasted me so incredibly well, but it's finally given out the microphone is broken so I think I might have to replace it which is quite unfortunate but what's that saying it's one of my favorite ones my dad and I say it to each other all the time god grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference I think that's brilliant anyway I'll see you tomorrow hey there should we read a poem as promised, I want to read you a poem. Uh, this one is Autumn, a Fragment by Alexander Pushkin. I'm not going to read you all of it. I'm just going to read you the first stanza, the fifth stanza, and the seventh stanza. It is October, and the lingering leaves are disappearing from the naked branches. The road is glazed, the coals of autumn breathes. The mill stream still sounds loudly as it passes, but now the pond is hard. Out to the fields, my neighbour promptly leads his canine forces. The frenzied sport lays waste the winter crops. The sleeping groves are roosed by baying dogs. This is my season. I'm also going to read you the fifth stanza. Autumn, I know, is commonly berated. That sentiment, dear reader, isn't mine. I love it for its quietly glowing beauty. As to a child unloved by its own kin, I am distinctly drawn to it. Yes, autumn. Of all the seasons, it is my favourite one. Season of melancholy, eyes enchanter. How pleasing to me are your farewell hues. How I love the pomp of fading nature. The trees arrayed in gold vermilion dress. The fresh wind blowing through their tops and chanting. The dense and darkly undulating skies. The sun's infrequent ray. The early frost. And grizzled winter's lightly murmured threats. Every year, when autumn comes, I flourish. And that's from my favourite anthology, which is The Four Seasons, Everyman, Library, Pocket Poets. But even though I read them frequently, it's... I tend to, on a walk, I'll only read one. And so it's not like I've reread these poems too many times. Nonetheless, though, they should definitely bring out a second edition of this, um, or like a second collection, part two. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that it brought a moment of autumnal calm and appreciation. Um, I hope it encouraged you to go out on a walk today. And thank you so much to BBC Sounds for sponsoring today's video, and um, I hope that you have a productive week. Just look how beautiful the world is at the moment. And for the record, this is my favourite colour. Um, I'm not sure if you can pick it up entirely on camera because the light's starting to, to fade, but it's this really nice mustard yellow colour that you find on older trees.